Hi, this is Robin, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about using Photoshop's Liquify filter to do basic retouching. So first of all, first things first, the Liquify filter lets you push, pull, shrink, expand, and twirl areas of an image. So in other words, it lets you distort them. You can almost think of your image has being melted or or like the the cream on the top of a latte and then you know the way they can push and shove that cream around to make a design well that's essentially what happens your whole image becomes like a melted goop and with the liquefied tool you can push it around and manipulate it into different shapes now in order to access and use the liquefy filter First and most important is you need to be sure that your Photoshop preferences are set to use graphics processor. So I'm on a Windows machine, so hopefully you'll know where to find your preferences for Photoshop on a Mac. Uh, but on Windows, you would go up to the edit menu up here at the upper left, click on that, come down to where it says preferences and come out to the option where it says performance and click on that. And we get this pop up with the preferences related to performance. You do need to be sure that like mine, yours is checked to use graphic processor. If it is not checked on, then check it on or else the liquify filter is not going to work. So I'm gonna turn that off since I already have mine set. Now, the way that you get into the liquify filter once you have that set is from an active Photoshop layer, and I always recommend that you not work on the background layer. So a uh, couple choices, you can either do uh, drag this down to the bottom of the layers panel to that box with the plus, which is add a new layer icon, or you can do a control or command J to jump that layer up and make a duplicate layer. Now, when you're working in the liquify filter, I highly suggest that you convert that duplicated layer to a smart object because that will give you the ability to make some modifications after you've used the liquify filter if you change your mind about how things look so to do that um, again a couple ways so in this empty area you can right click and come down to where it says convert to smart object or let me just click back over here. You can press the Alt or the Option key and release it and then quickly LSS. And then you can see with the series of keystrokes, we've created a, a smart object on that layer. And that little icon in the lower right tells you it's a smart object. You can see that this layer does not have that. Okay, so once that you have that uh, smart object established on the active layer, the one that has the color on it, then you go to the top of your Photoshop interface to the filter menu and come down to where it says liquify and left click on that. And that takes us into the liquify interface. So it's a separate interface. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate for you some of the features and functions that I find useful for basic retouching in this uh, liquify filter. But first, before we get into that, I just wanted to give you a quick reminder. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, you can do so underneath the video by clicking on that subscribe button and on the black bell icon. And with that, uh, you'll get a single heads up alert directly from YouTube when I post new content. If you've subscribed already, you're all set. You don't have to do anything. Uh, so what I wanted to do was start with a liquify filter interface tour. Uh, if you're familiar with the layout and what's in this interface, then you can go direct to my demos for the liquify filter. Uh, and again, in the description below the video, uh, there will be timed links that will take you either directly to the portrait demo, the nature demo, or the art demo. And again, that's in the description. So if you need to hop around or if you need to come back and get there quickly, uh, that's a way to save some time. Okay, so the interface tour for the liquify filter. Over on the left here, if you look where my green highlight is, that's where the distortion tools are. And over on the right are where the different options and settings are for those tools. So let's just use this picture of the apples just to get you oriented to how the tool works. 
And I will point out some of my more used uh, Liquify tools. Some of them I don't use, but anyway, we'll I'll point out where they are in case you want to play with them. So the one I use the most is this one up at the top. Uh, and it looks like a little finger pointing right up there. And that's the forward warp tool. And what that does is it's basically what the little icon shows. It lets you nudge or push or pull some of the content. And as I said, it's sort of almost like it's a melted content. And so that's letting you nudge that melted content. Now, the settings that are available for that tool, as I said, are over on the right. So the first slider setting we have is the size. And honestly, for me, I don't use this size slider, but the size setting is one I use a lot. So I don't find it convenient to use that slider. What I use are the right bracket. So I'm hitting that now and you can see it's expanding my brush size and my left bracket key. So those are the ones sort of just above and to the left of the enter key. And so those are the keys I use to adjust the size of that forward warp tool and the other brushes. I tend to work with a larger brush. So not large, large, but like this or this size. Typically, I don't work with a very small, tight brush. OK, so um, the next tool that we have over here is called density and over here on the upper right. And what the density does is it controls how close to the brush's edges the effect is going to be applied from the center. Now, with these tools, with the Liquify tool, it is the center of the tool. So see where I've got that edge of that apple right in the center of the tool and right in the center of my highlighter? That is where the effect is strongest. So when you go to click on things, you'll be clicking with the center of that brush, not pushing from the edges but you can affect how far out to the edges depending on more dense is to the right and will take you having more capabilities for um, distorting all the way closer to the edges of the brush lower down is closer to the center i tend to keep mine just around 25 to 30 because i want my movements to be very subtle for the kinds of things that i'm doing so and typically once i set density, pressure, and rate, I don't change them around. The only one I often change is size. Now, the next one that we see here is pressure right here on the upper right. And what the pressure does is it speeds, it affects the speed that the distortions are made at. And again, higher will be faster rate of distortion, lower will be less rate of distortion. So again, I tend to keep mine in the 20 to 25 range because I want to be doing here, let me just show you, very subtle little movements. Watch the apple where I am here in the center. So you can see I'm left clicking there and pushing over. So left click in the center of the thing I want to move and pushing over, okay? So now there's two other things I can show you right here. So right below that forward warp tool is a reconstruct brush or a reconstruct tool. So I'll left click on that and you can see it's active because there's black behind it. Now I just clicked and moved these this side of this apple. So if you watch the apple as I use the, look at, you can see I'm reconstructing this back to where it was before I did some warping on it. And let me just show you again. It's a forward warp tool. And let me shove this up here. I see, so you can push this way and pull this way. So you can do all kinds of things. All right, so let's say I didn't want to do any of that. Then back over on the right-hand panel under Properties, you can go to Restore All. And left-click on that, and it puts everything back to how you started. So you would use this reconstruct tool if let's say i here let me just do it <laughs> so if i have it on the forward warp and let's say i move this all in on the apple and then i start dragging this up okay all right so it's like oh why what was i thinking that's terrible <laughs> so what i want to do is use this reconstruct brush here because maybe i like this but i don't like this so now with that reconstruct tool active, I can, oh, and I can uh, impact the rate. I can just brush on this 
and pull this part back down to where it was. Okay, let me make that bigger. All right, so, or else just down a little bit more and nudge it back down a little bit closer to how it had started out. Whereas, again, watch the image. If I click on Restore All, it just pushes everything back to the how it started out. Okay, so Reconstruct Brush, if you just want to undo or fix parts of what you did, Restore All, if you want to go back to the exact starting, the overall starting point all over again. The next tool down in the list is the Twirl tool, and I'll show this in my third demo, so we'll hold off on that, but that's just the Twirl tool. And basically what that does is it rotates pixels clockwise or counterclockwise. And that has another uh, feature over here in the right-hand side of the property. So with that Twirl tool, you can set the rate, and I have it set to work very fast, and you can also pin edges or not. So let me just leave that click to off for now. So that's the twirl tool. It rotates the pixels clockwise or counterclockwise. The next one down is the pucker tool. That's this one right here where my highlighter is. The pucker tool shrinks and moves pixels to the center of the brush. So again, as I said, the center of the brush is basically the action area for the liquify tool and for making things happen. So if you want to shrink or pucker, it's going to shrink towards that center. The next one is the opposite of that. That's the bloat tool. So that's that one that right there. The bloat tool will expand or move pixels away from the center of the brush. And you can use the rate slider with that. So again, those are tools that you can impact the speed with which uh, something is happening. Okay, You cannot affect the rate with that forward warp tool. The next tools, then I don't use this tool here, which is the push left tool. So I'm just going to pass over that. But I do use this next tool. So the freeze mask tool. The freeze mask and the thaw mask tools um, are used with these tools above to protect parts of your images from distortion. So with this freeze tool, let me just show you something here. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger with my bracket key. And let's say I don't want to push this too far. So now I am working with this freeze tool active and I am just painting the areas that I don't want to get distorted by the liquify filter. And the settings, if you look on the right side for that freeze mask, if you look over here, first of all, I have it clicked to show image and I have it clicked to show mask, which is what this green is. And you can pick the color that you want. So if you don't like the green, there are other colors over here on the right that you can pick. I just think it's easy to see that. Okay, so now I have this part of this apple frozen. So let me just go back to that forward warp tool at the upper left, the one I said is good for nudging. and Make this a little bit bigger. And again, I'm going to click from the center over. And let me just start over here. And can you see as I, so I'm click, push, click, push, click, push, click, push, click, push. Okay. And so if each time I'm clicking with in the center of the area I want to push and now I'm click pull click pull click pull okay so this green mask with that freeze tool active has frozen that apple so theoretically none of that should move have moved even though I've been pushing and distorting and smudging with this forward warp tool so now let's go to the tool just below that freeze which is the thaw thaw mask tools right below it it's the inverse so once you've frozen something you want to unfreeze it to be able to work with it so again I'm going to just paint with it like a brush to get rid of that freeze mask and you can see it has kept let me just turn the preview on and off you can watch the image it has not moved this area where I put the freeze mask so you would use the freeze mask to protect areas of your image that you don't want distorted when you're using these other tools. And then after you make whatever distortions you want, then you use the thaw tool to remove that freeze mask. 
Okay, so hopefully that helps. Um, also, you can see that there's a lot more other settings here in this area on the right-hand panel in the Liquify interface, but I am not going to cover any face distortions, masking, or selections in the Liquify filter in this video. So I'll cover those tools in a separate video. So now that we have the overview and you know the tools are on the left, the settings are on the right and just overview at high level what some of these tools do. Let's exit out of here and I can move on to the first of three demos. Okay, in this first demo, it is, first of all, these are all stock photos that I'm using. If I knew who had created them, I would include the attributions, but I'll just tell you that they are stock photos. So we have this portrait image of a girl in a white t-shirt standing in the dark. And what I want to do is my goal is not to alter her body shape at all. So I would say, please, please do not do that without a subject's permission or a client's permission um, because you just want to be very ethical about what you're doing with the liquify tool the thing that i find when i'm looking at this shot is that the shot either wasn't styled or wasn't styled in a good way it's not flattering to her because there is a lot of excess fabric here you can see her body shape is nice and slim and you know and even if she was a more plus size person all this fabric is not adhering to her body this is all excess fabric so if you're doing something for a client let's say a fashion retailer or designer and they want it to look this blousey well then you don't want to go correcting it for them if that's how they want it to look but if the stylist didn't use the a clips and clip this to be more tailored to her body it's just taking and detracting away from her if it's a straight portrait shot. So I want to try to trim in some of this excess fabric without altering her body type or her body shape. And her hair is kind of straight and limp. So I might, with that liquidify tool, try to get a little bit more volume without, again, going crazy on her hair. So let's just go walk through the process of how to do this. So again, I am only going to modify how her clothing is falling. I'm not adjusting her body shape or body type. So with your image open, again, you want to duplicate that background layer. So I'm going to use a control or command J, but you could drag that background layer to the bottom of the layers panel to the box with the plus, which is the new layer icon to get this. And this is what's going to become my liquefied layer. All right, now, as I said before, before going into the liquify filter, I suggest you convert that active layer to a smart object. And I'm going to use a key sequence to do it. So I'm going to press Alter Option and then the letters LSS just quickly. And we have added this icon down here so we know that this is now a smart object. Okay, so now with that ready with the duplicated and the smart object, now we're going to go into filter at the top of the interface, come down to where it says liquify, left click, and it will take us into the liquify filter that we just got the overview of. Okay, now um, I am going to, first of all, before I do anything to her, I am going to use that freeze mask tool that I told you about. So over here on the left hand toolbar for liquify, I'm coming down to where it says freeze mask tool and I'm going to left click on that. All right. And I'm going to make my brush size a little bit smaller using my left bracket key. And again, just want to point out if you didn't um, listen to the intro or watch the tutorial with the interface uh, tour that the mask that's going to appear in green here is coming from having this click to on for show mask and because I picked green as my freeze mask color okay so now what I want to do is as I said I only want to move and liquefy and distort 
this excess fabric in different places on her and possibly maybe do a little volumize on her hair. So what I want to do is freeze the parts of her body and her shirt that I don't want to move when I start doing this. So again, I'm trying to freeze the areas that represent her actual body versus the bulky clothing that she's wearing. And I'm doing a bunch because I said I wanted to do her hair. You don't have to entirely cover the whole thing, just the areas closest to where you're going to be working. So you'll see I'm not going to do anything in the center of her body. I'm not doing her legs. So that should be enough of a freeze for the areas that I want to work on. Okay, so now with these areas frozen so that they will not get distorted, I'm going to come up to the upper left tool to that forward warp tool. Click on that, make sure there's the black behind it that it's active and adjust your brush to whatever size you prefer. But as I said, I like to keep it a little large like that. And so again, now what we are going to do is the center of this tool is where the action really happens. And, and it will extend further out towards the edges depending on how much density or pressure you have set your tools to. So I'm going to click, push, click, push. And so you'll see each time I say click, I'm centering the thing I want to move in, in the center of that forward warp tool. Click, push, click, push. So you can see I'm making very subtle little movements. Click, push, click, push. And I'll just keep going over it and over it. All right, and maybe I might want to do some freeze. I'm going to go back to my on the left side to my freeze mask tool, and I might just want to protect some of this since there's shapes there. Since and I'm moving this in, so that I don't end up distorting the background too. Same thing on this side. I'm gonna do a little bit there, so I don't want to distort the background. Go back to the forward warp tool and again you don't have to do all these steps but i just want you to know that once you've done some freezing you can go back and freeze some more if you decide that something else might get impacted by your distorting so now i'm back on the forward warp tool and i'm just going to continue clicking and gently slowly pushing this excess fabric in so again you can see this is frozen i'm not altering her body type. I am just trying to get rid of some of this crazy extra fabric. Click and push, click and push. It is a bloused top. It's intended to be a big top. So I am not going to entirely get rid of the blousing because that's the design. I'm going to push because I see something happening to the background there. So I'm not going to entirely eliminate the blousiness of the top. I just don't want it extreme so it overwhelms her. So I don't need to make that too perfectionist. You get the idea. And same thing over here. There's this little thing for the sleeves sticking out. So I'll push that in a little bit. And then there's this odd little piece. I think I might need to do a little bit of thaw over here just so I can push that piece in. So back to the forward warp tool. And again, clicking in the center of the forward warp tool. I'm just click and push, click and push, or click and nudge, <laughs> whatever word you prefer to think of it as. Okay, so I've gotten that pretty well in at this point. Now, you can see her hair is up here. It's a little dark. Maybe I can make this a little bigger so we can see her hair. But she could stand to have a little bit more volume in her hair. So again, I'm just going to click and nudge she has very fine hair and if we want it to look a little bit more fashiony it would be nice for her to have a little more volume and look like the hair is blowing you know like with a fan or something so you can see i'm not going extreme or nuts here the point is to make her be the star 
and not all the fabric and not to do any radical alterations. So I'm going to say for purposes of the demo, that's good enough using the forward work tool to give her hair a little bit more volume and to reduce the volume of uh, this t-shirt and this blousey t-shirt. So when you feel like you have gotten yours to the point where it's uh, on your image, you've adjusted and distorted where you want it to, then again, come to the toolbar on the left, come down to where it says thaw mask, left click on that tool. And now you'd want to make the brush bigger. So I'm using the right bracket tool just so you can thaw it faster. And there we go. So now we'll get rid of the thaw and she should just stay the way she is. All right. So now just to show you another tool, um, right over here, as I pointed out before, is the pucker tool right here. It's the one, two, three, four, fifth one down. And as I said, that shrinks in or puckers in the pixels towards the center of your tool. So if I want to maybe reduce the obviousness of some of these wrinkles in the fabric, because it doesn't look like somebody took care of that too, I'm just painting and watch the wrinkles. So you'll see it and I could just hold it there and watch it pull in. You see it pulling in? Can you see that? And you can affect the rate a little bit of that. Oops, too much. <laughs> So I'm going to use my reconstruct brush and because that was pulling her arm in there. OK, and I'll go back to the pucker tool and again, make this a little bit smaller and just try to get rid of some of these other wrinkles this way, too. OK, so you can decide if there's something that you want to shrink, you know, and see if that helps that. OK. I rarely use the smooth tool. I rarely use the push left. I rarely use the bloat tool. So you can just experiment for yourself. So once you get your image looking the way you want it to, and again, you can see I haven't made it perfect because I'm not spending the time I would, but we have not affected her body shape at all. You can see her body under the shirt. We've just gotten rid of all of this excess fabric. So once you get this where you want, you come to the lower right in the interface and click OK to send it back. Here we go on the right to the Photoshop layer. And by doing that smart object before we went into the liquify filter, you can see that there's a mask layer and a sub layer called liquify. If you double click on that word liquify, like I'm doing right now, it takes you back. So let's see you thought you maybe went a little too crazy or you didn't go crazy enough with the distorting tools, then what you can do is come back in by using that and then come back and click OK again to come back to your layer. Now, let's just say, OK, that was fine for the liquify tool, but I always sort of like to show other things just so that beyond the liquify. So that was the liquify example relating to the portrait example. But I just always like to show you other things to think about for finishing for your own images. So using that liquefied layer as your launch layer, I'm still finding all these wrinkles distracting. So you can also try to use your remove tool. Let me see, yeah, the remove tool. And if you add a new empty layer, so in your bottom of your layers panel, come to that box with the plus, the add new layer icon. And with the Remove tool active, you can paint over and get rid of some of these distracting wrinkles. I really think that's just more than what is needed. It just looks like somebody didn't take care of her clothing properly before they did the photo shoot. OK, and I mean, if that gets to be too extreme or you think, well, it doesn't look realistic, but she's still got um, shape and, and things going on here, uh, you can always reduce the opacity a little bit up here in the upper right in the layers panel and just leave a hint of the wrinkles there. So that's a finishing step that has nothing to do with uh, liquify per se. So let's go on to the next demo. So in this second demo, I wanted to show you a nature or a landscape sort of shot. 
And what I wanted to show you how to do with the liquify filter is basically to enhance or to force perspective. So what you can actually do is add a sort of an ultra wide angle effect to your image, um, either if you didn't get enough of it or didn't have an ultra wide angle lens, or if you just want to add some drama. So with an ultra wide angle lens, as you probably know, if you do landscape photography, is the things closer to your lens are going to look larger and the things further away are going to look smaller. So if you didn't get that effect or you didn't get it as dramatic as you wanted, you can use the liquify filter to enhance your image and sort of enhance, how about that, rather than fake, <laughs> a little bit of a uh, forced perspective look. So, and I would recommend this. I think it would come in pretty handy for nature shots. And I'm classifying this as a, kind of a mix between a nature and a landscape, but it's kind of more nature with this Swiss bull here. You can definitely use it for landscape shots too. And another area I think it would be also probably useful is macro shots. So again, if you had an insect or something like that, you could freeze the flower or whatever Whatever surface the insect is on and then enhance and just liquefy and enlarge slightly the size of the insect so it's the star of the image. So those are just some examples of applications for something that you could use the liquefy for. So again we have this image opened and I want to duplicate this layer so in the layers panel either control or command J or drag that background layer down to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new layer icon which is right there and this is going to become the liquefied layer okay now in the portrait example what i said to do was to immediately also after making this duplicate layer convert it to a smart object but I'm not going to do that right away here. I'm going to do something else to, to teach you some other things if you're not aware of them that we can do. Now, because I said I wanted to give that enhanced force perspective look, the things closest to the camera here, and I'm saying us as viewers being the camera, is I want to make the head of this bull and the bell because they're the closest things a little bit bigger than the way this shot turned out. So what I want to do first is select the area that I want to distort before I go into uh, the liquify filter. Okay. So we're going, I'm going to use the object selection tool, which over here on the right in my docked right toolbar is this box with the arrow into it. So I've got that active. If you have an older version of Photoshop, you could also do what I'm going to do using the quick selection tool. And so now what I want to select is this bull's head. So I'm just going to trace because if you look in my options bar, I have this set to the lasso as my method for selecting. And I'm just tracing loosely around his head and the bell. And then ideally the selection will cling to his head when we do that. Okay, and let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we've ended up with. And I'm now going to switch over here to the quick selection tool just to do some little refinements. Um, I definitely don't need this area over here, so I don't know why that grabbed that. Um, I want to add a little, so it missed a part of his ear. So I'm just tracing, and I'm not going to get too perfectionist about this. It looks like we got his horns. I don't need this area in the Alps. Looks like if we're looking at the marching ants, we've got his ear, we've got his snout. Okay, and there might be a little bit here that I don't need. All right, so that's close enough for government work here to have made the selection for that. Now, I want to, and I'm going to put this back to my neutral tools here. If I send this into liquify like this, I won't be able to do anything because this selection is clinging to his head. So what I want to do is push out the edges a little bit from where the actual selection is. And gee, I'm seeing something else that didn't go quite right because when we came in, it came too aggressively in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to go up to the top of the interface here and go to the select menu. 
and come down to where it says modify and then go to that fly out menu where it says expand and what I want to do is we'll get this little pop-up box and I want to it's already there um, maybe I'll just do it out to 20 uh, 20 to 22 pixels is how much I want to expand this selection away from his head by so we're expanding the distance from the object to make some room for the liquefy to take effect okay so I have said now watch the selection and see if it hops out a little bit when I click OK on that expand selection yeah so you can see it's just a subtle amount so you can decide for yours whether you want to expand out or shrink in because there is um, a contract option also all right so now with that active selection of marching ants around his head which is the part that I want to be working with liquefy in now I'll go and convert this to a smart object. So I said you can right click in this empty area on that active layer, come down to where it says convert to smart object, or you can use that key sequence I told you uh, earlier, which is alter option, then the letters LSS, and that would do the same thing. Okay, now we're ready to go up to the filter liquefy and we come into the interface now if you saw my previous demo you will be familiar with the fact that what we have now is this green mask you can see i have it set to green that represents the frozen area of this image so anything i do from a distortion standpoint using the liquify forward warp tool will not affect these frozen areas of my image all right so that's already by doing that selection it has saved me the extra steps so we're only going to work on the bull's head so with the forward warp tool active which is that little finger pushing icon at the upper left in this interface and i'm going to make this brush a little bigger so it's not too aggressive and as I mentioned in the earlier demo, and I'm just repeating because in case somebody only wants to come into this demo, um, this tool operates from the center of the brush. So see where my highlighter is? In the center of that green highlighter and in the center of the white forward warp white brush around it, that's when the, where the tool is really operating. So I will center that tool around the area I want to liquefy and distort. So I'm left clicking with that in the center, see, and just gently nudging this out to the edge of the area that I expanded the selection to. So I want to fill that empty selection area that I created in the Photoshop interface. So I want to enhance the size of this bull's head so it looks like he's even closer to the camera than he actually was and again it's something you can do with any kind of things as i mentioned in my intro uh, just to give it some more drama to give it an ultra wide angle lens effect whatever you want to use it for and i'm not going to be too perfectionist about how i'm doing this because i just want to give you an idea of how to work with the tools i would spend a lot more time if i was doing this for an actual image I was going to use for a fine art piece. All right, I just keep clicking in the center of that forward warp tool, which is the circle area, and then I just gently push. And as I said earlier, I have my pressure and my density set very low, so it's only moving in very subtle movements when I push. Okay, so now let me make this larger because now we're into the smaller parts of the image with its horn. So I'm using the left bracket key. And watch my brush getting smaller here. And I just want to make that a little smaller so we're not affecting too much. So I'm going to now try to pull the horns just out. And I won't worry if I don't get it all the way out. But proportionally it, for his head, those horns should fill out to the 20 to 22 pixels that I had set it to and I'll just click pull click pull click push 
go. Then let's do the right horn just go quickly, centering the horn for my example in the center of the brush because that's the part of the brush that's going to do the bulk of the distorting. And click pull, click pull, click push, click push. All right, and I'm going to call that as good because I don't think you need to watch grass grow while I do this. Okay, so, so I'm going to say I have, once you get it where you want it to be, then you come to the right side of the interface and click OK. And we're returned to the Photoshop interface. And if you want, you can come to this mask layer. And in the properties for that layer, you can just feather that a little bit just to be sure that it's soft between what's happened between the bull's head and uh, the rest of his body. And again, the returned liquefied layer that comes back from the liquefy interface gives you a mask layer and it gives you a sub layer that says liquefy. So if you double click on this word liquefy, you'll be taken back into the liquify interface if you wanted to make some further adjustments. Okay, I don't, so I'll click cancel. All right, so now let's just look and see from our background layer. Yeah, so you can see it's enlarged the size of his head and the bell, so it does give the impression that he's closer to the camera. If you ever taken pictures of your pets or something and the dog's snout is like right in your face or something, how big it looks, it's that same kind of thing. Now, I'm not going to do it for purposes of time, but let's say you had something like this with an object in the foreground, maybe they're rocks, maybe it's an animal, whatever it is, and then mountains in the background. Well, you can do the same thing where you would select the mountains and then just do the inverse. Here I made it larger because it's closer to the camera. You could do that liquefying and make whatever's in the background a little bit smaller. So it looks like relatively it's further away from your foreground object. So I'm not going to do that, but uh, you get the idea. So that was the second demo, just trying to show you an example of how you can use the liquefy filter to enhance or force perspective and where it might be useful in a landscape, a nature, or perhaps a macro photography example. So now let's go on to the third and final demo. Now in this demo, this is demo number three, I wanted to show how to create abstract art with this and create abstract shapes uh, using the liquify filter. And you're going to be using them that twirl tool I showed you in the tour for the interface of Liquify to spin objects and create art that way. Now, what I have found is that the Liquify twir uh, twirl tool really works best when it is used with very colorful images like this one or very contrasty pictures. But you can create very artful effects, I think. You know, you can be very creative with it. And you can use them just as abstract art. You could use them to create backgrounds either on their own or perhaps you could then run them through a Gaussian blur or something to use as a background. You can clip them onto text. You can do all sorts of things once you create these abstract types of art with the Liquify Twirl tool. So let's again just get into the steps for how to do this. So we have our background image open. And again, you can, in the bottom of the layers panel, you can drag this background layer down to the Add New Layer icon, which is that box with the plus. Or you can use Control or Command J to duplic uh, duplicate the layer. And this is going to become the liquefied layer. All right. And as I've said uh, before, I highly recommend that you convert it to a smart object before going into the liquefy filter so that if you want to tweak it, uh, you can do whatever, tweak your results. So you can either right click in that empty area and come down to convert to smart object, or you can use a key sequence, which is alter option release then LSS and then we've got our smart object icon right there so we're ready to go into the liquify filter okay so we come to the top of the Photoshop interface to the filter menu 
come down to where it says liquify and left click on that and that takes us into the liquify interface now what i want to do with this is use the twirl tool because we haven't used that before so that's the one two three fourth tool down and if you hover over the tools it'll tell you what it is so it'll be active with the black behind it so that's the twirl tool now with the twirl tool over in the settings panel on the right we can set the rate so let me just put this down slowly and show you what it can do here use my right bracket to make this bigger okay so again with liquify filter the tools work from the center out so i where my green highlighter is in the center of that is where the strength of the tool is working and again i have it set to a slow rate for this twirl tool so let's try to start twirling this rose can you watch the rose where i am and can you see it slowly is moving there okay so that's because i have the rate set to slow so let me restore all and put this back to where we started and you can adjust it anywhere you want along there but because i'm doing this for the demo and you might only want to do some subtle so that's why i just like you to know you have control over how fast the twirling takes effect all right so i've put it up to a high rate of speed and let's just do a comparison and see so see how much faster that goes at the high rate of speed with the twirl tool and as i said the center of the tool is the center for the effect all right now there's something else over here in the right hand settings panel you have these words pin edges and right now it's unpinned so if you go near an edge and use the, i'm just going to only be using the twirl tool for this demo use the twirl look what it does see where i am up here on the up it's dragging this away from the edge and you're getting transparencies now you might want that and might want to save it and be able to apply it onto something where you would have transparency behind what you're doing so it's just up to you in terms of you know what it is you want to achieve with your image okay i'm just using the reconstruct tool to put that back so that there's no transparency and coming back to the twirl tool now so that's if you have it set with pin edges off you will get those transparencies at the edges if you click that to on and then do the same thing let's do this orange rose up here and now i've got the twirl tool i've got it on a high rate and i have pin edges clicked on and see it's not pulling away and producing those transparencies what you'll also notice is if you watch in the center of the tool with this twirl tool it's going clockwise See that? Now let me do this rose. Let me make the brush with the right bracket key a little bigger. It's going clockwise. I can even do this a little bit faster just to spin things up. Okay. Now let's say on this side of the image, I want to go counterclockwise. So in order to do that, you'd have to press or hold Alt and, or Option. So press and hold it, and now click your twirl tool, and that gets you the counterclockwise. Okay, you can make your brush a little smaller. All right, and you can move it certainly i'm just holding it still you could certainly move the tool and get different effects if you want to that way too okay all right so let's say we've got this all twirled <laughs> in the way that we want it and so now um once you get your design the way you want it then over on the right hand side of the liquify filter interface come down to the bottom and you can again see it's twirled it here preview on and off click ok and we've accepted that back to the Photoshop interface. So that's the twirl tool in the liquify filter. And so that was basically all I had to show you with the different effects and how to do some basic retouching with regard to the liquify filter. But I will give you, as I mentioned, one of the ways you could use this was to 
map this onto some text. So I'm going to just include some bonus content here of one way to use the liquify twirled uh, image with text. So this, again, has nothing to do with uh, liquify per se. It's just something you can do with your artwork once you create it. So uh, with your background layer, turn off the eye visibility. OK, and now what I'm going to try to do is, as I said, create some text and then clip this image to that text. So now I'm going to come to the bottom of the layers panel to add new layer icon, which is the box with the plus. And let me do this here. There we go. And now with that empty layer active, that's got the blue on it, I'm going to come to the toolbar, click on the text tool. I want the horizontal tool, so that's good. And now what I'm going to do is just be sure you're on whatever font and size and whatever that you want. I'm going to click and type the word roses, R-O-S-E-S. -E -S. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to use the free transform tool to make this bigger. So edit and free transform. We get the bounding box. So I'm going to just quickly do this so we don't take up too much time just to show you how to do something if you want to play. All right, and maybe I'll bring this up just a little bit. Accept it at the top with the check mark once you get it where you want it. Okay, and now what I want to do is clip these twirled, liquefied twirled roses onto that word roses. So I'm going to hover with my Alter Option key depressed between these layers. And if you watch, so see, watch where my highlighter is. I'm holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, hovering. And then when you get that box with the little down arrow, left click, and it's clipping those swirled roses to the text word roses, okay? And then I can turn my background back on if I want to. So if you want to take this word and use it someplace else, you can save this as a PNG and then take this and apply it someplace else as text. Or if you want to continue to work with your original roses picture, you can turn that back on, but let me, and maybe it's harder to see it that way. <laughs> let me show you something you can do. If you double click with the left in that open area on that layer, we bring up our layer style options. So let's just play with some layer styles and see what we can do to these words roses. So I'm gonna try bevel and emboss. Okay, so look at the effect that that produced. What else might look good? Give it a stroke around it, maybe just to help it stand out against if I'm going to bring those other roses back. And then maybe try to cast a little drop shadow. There we go. Okay, so that to me looks pretty good. And I'm going to leave it on a normal blend mode. So I'll click OK that I've added those layer styles to that. And now let's try adding this back in. And so you can see, you can get some pretty interesting effects because now you sort of have this 3D effect that was created by the liquefied roses on top of the original roses, and it gives it kind of a cool effect, I think. So I think the point of doing that was just to say, I hope you'll enjoy finding creative ways to work with Photoshop's liquefy filter to either distort or to retouch your images. Um, the thing I would say is just remember, I think it's a good idea to use the tool in what I call good conscience and remain a photo artist and don't become a plastic surgeon when you're using the liquefy filter. So take care and have fun and seeing what you can achieve with the liquefy filter.